Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at the quadratic formula. So we're first going to go through and look at the formula. We're then going to go through a little bit of notes in regards to the formula. We're going to look at three examples and then on this next page we're going to look at one F one and then on this next page we're going to look at one application question. So before we actually get into the formula, I first want to show you why this formula is actually needed. So if I gave you some question like this, we would have to try to factor this right here and then set each of those terms equal to zero just like we did in the last lesson so let's try to do that we're going to do our product and our sum product is the first term which there is a hidden one there so it's negative one times the last term which is nine negative one times nine that just gives us negative nine and then the sum is the middle term so let's write that and then we got to try to come up with two terms that multiply to negative 9, product of negative 9, but a sum, it adds up to 5. Okay, And you can try to think about those numbers for a little while, but there are actually no integers that will do that for us. Okay, So nothing works. But it doesn't mean that there's not a solution for this. If I were to graph this, and look at it on my calculator, it's going to look something like this. We've got our x-axis, our y-axis, and the graph kind of looks something like that. Okay, so I can see there's a solution. There's an x-intercept there, and there's an x-intercept there. So there are roots, but we can't find them using this factoring way. So hence why we have to use this new method, and that's where the quadratic formula comes in. So for the quadratic formula, it says given a quadratic equation like we had above in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So we've got to make sure we have this equals 0. The following formula can be used to solve for the roots of the equation. And then we're given this formula. Now this formula you guys are going to have on your formula sheet. And the important things from this formula are these letters in here. So we have B's, I'm just going to highlight wherever we have a B, okay, and that's going to come from the B that was up top here. So whatever is up here in that spot beside the X, it has to go in this spot and this spot. We also have A, and A is the integer that goes with the X squared. And then lastly, we have a C, and C goes... With this one, it's just the constant term at the end. Okay, so we're going to have to take whatever's here. Maybe it's a plus 5. It would have to go right there. If it was negative 2, negative 2. Okay. So next it says, note, this formula will always work to find the roots of an equation if they exist. Okay, so if there are roots, it's going to find them. But it is not always the most efficient method. Because okay, if I can factor something, factoring should be a lot quicker. I'm going to want to factor it. Then it says it is also used when an exact value is needed and the roots are irrational numbers. So if ever you guys have a question where it says exact, you're going to have to use the quadratic formula. Because if you use your calculator, it's going to give you decimals. And if you try to use factoring, you're not going to be able to factor it. So again, with these exact values, at the end, you're going to get some answer that's going to have a radical. So it could be something like root 3. This is exact. And you don't want to then change it into a decimal. If it asked for a decimal, you wouldn't want to approximate it and write out the decimal because then you're going to have to round. So this is approximate. So looking at our first example down below here, it says find the roots of the following equations using the quadratic formula. 
So to use the quadratic formula, again, I have to get it to look like this form, where I have equal zero at one side. So with these first two, actually, they're already in equals zero. So all I gotta do is find the a, the b, and the c. Now, if ever there's not a number in front of the variable, there's just a hidden one. So I can see a is that first one, it's a one. B is also a 1, that's this second one, and then C is a negative 4. Okay, and then I'm going to start with my quadratic formula. Okay, and then once I have this, I'm just going to plug in each of these into their spots. So B has to go in several spots, and then C has to go there. So let's write those in. Okay, so now I have everything written in. Make sure if ever you're putting in a negative, you're careful that when you put it in, you have the negative. And now what I would do, I wouldn't type this whole thing into my calculator because if you don't type it in correctly, you're not gonna get out the right answer. What I would do is I'd go kind of slowly step by step. So I'd maybe first just put this part into my calculator, get an answer, and then in my next step, kind of do the next calculation. So let's do that. So all I have done now is I took this, put that in my calculator, it gave me 17. Just make sure you're really careful of all of your brackets and the negative there. And then in the bottom here we had 2 times 1, so that just gave me 2. Okay, and then this is going to be my final answer. So this next one I already have it written as equals 0 on the one side but it's not in the right order. I wanted to have my x squareds first, then my x's, and then my constant term last. So let's write it in the right order. So I'm gonna have four x squared first. There are no x terms, so I can say there's zero x's, and then minus 42. So I can see my a is four, my b is zero, and then my c is at negative 42. So again, let's start out with our formula. Okay, then we're going to fill it in. So it's going to be minus, and then b was over here. That's just a 0. I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to slide everything back over. Okay, so we have that, and then again, what we want to do, what I would do is just simplify this inside piece, and this is going to disappear because it's just a zero, so we just have plus or minus, and then simplifying the inside of the radical here, I'm just going to do zero squared, that's going to be a zero, so that's gone, and then this negative and this negative, those are going to multiply and give me a positive, so those are going to cancel. So what I have left with is four, times 4 times 42. And then in the denominator, we just had 2 times 4, which is 8. Okay, so inside the radical here now, once we have this, what we want to try to do is simplify this. And back from our radicals unit, if you have two of the same term inside of the radical there, one of those can be cancelled and pulled out. Or if you want to think of it as... 4 times 4 is 16, and then when you take the square root of 16, you're just going to get 4. So 4 is going to come out. Okay, so that 4 came out, it's sitting right here now, and it just goes in front of the plus or minus. So I got plus or minus 4 square root 42. Now 42, you still want to check and see if that has any perfect squares inside of it. So you could divide by 4, 16, 25, okay, but there's no perfect squares inside of this, so I can't break it down into anything. So that's as simple as I can get it. But now I have 4 divided by 8 out front. So I can divide those two and then get my final answer. Okay, so that one's done now. On to our 
last one here. So this one, we don't have all the terms lined up on one side, so I'm going to have to move that r over. So let's do that first. So I'm going to have to subtract r from both sides. So I'm left with 15 r squared minus an r plus a 6. And now I can see this is a. There's a negative 1 in front of that r, so that is b. And then that is c. So again, we'll start out with our formula. And then we just take what we found over here and then plug those into their spots. So now that we have this, you can see when I put in the B, B was going to go here. So I got to make sure it was minus and then B. So it was minus and then B was negative 1. And then again, when I put B into the B squared, make sure you put brackets around this. So it's minus 1 in brackets squared and then the rest of our stuff. So let's simplify the inside here and multiply in the denominator. Okay, so the two negatives gave me a plus. Negative 1 squared is just 1, and 4 times 15 times 6 gives me 360. Next, I can subtract these two inner terms here. Okay, so now we have negative 359 in this radical. Now, if you know something about radicals, inside of a radical, you cannot have something negative. So because we have something negative, there is going to be no solution. So let's write that out. Okay, and you can check this on your calculator too. So I'm just going to pull it out. And let's put in negative square root of 359. And when I do that, it says non-real answer or you'll get some other type of error. Okay, so there's no solution for this. If we wanted to graph this, we could also graph it and verify to make sure. So let's go to our y equals. And then we are going to type in this into our y1. So we have that typed in. And then we'll click graph. And there should be no x-intercepts for there to be no solutions. So I can see the graph here. It's going upwards, so it's never going to come down and cross the x-axis. So it has no x-intercepts, no solutions. So that also verifies our answer. Last thing we're looking at here now is this application question. So it says, a snowboarder jumps and lands down the slope. His approximate height above the landing in meters is given by this function here where t represents the time in seconds. So our first question, exactly how long was the snowboarder in the air? So there's a few important things in this question that we're going to point out. The term exactly, that tells us that we can't have any decimals. So it's got to be exact. Okay, and for how long the snowboarder was in the air, if we're trying to figure out how long he was in the air, we need to find the times at which he was landing. So we need to find when his height was at zero. So starting with the function, we had h equals negative 2t squared plus 11t plus 3. And then we're going to change that height to be zero. Okay, now that we have that, I can see this is going to be my A, that's going to be my B, and that's going to be my C. So we've got our quadratic formula there, then we're going to plug into it. So it's going to be minus, and then B was 11, plus or minus, B squared, B was 11, minus 4 times A, A was negative 2, and then c was a 3. And then in the denominator, we got 2 times a, which was negative 2. So 
So simplifying in the inside of this radical here, I'm going to put that into my calculator, and you're going to get 145. And in the denominator, 2 times negative 2, that's going to give me negative 4. And then what we want to do here is we want to try to simplify this radical. So you want to try to think of terms that go into 145. So what you can do, you're going to go into your calculator, put in 145, and divide it by perfect squares. So divide by like 4, got a decimal. So it doesn't work. 145 by the next perfect square, which is 9, got a decimal. doesn't work. Okay, and you can keep doing this. Next perfect square is 16. Got a decimal. So we can't simplify square root 145. You could keep trying to go up to other perfect squares, 25, 36, 49. Keep going up. None of them are going to work. So the next thing we got to do is interpret our answer here. I'm going to type this into my calculator. I'm going to do it once where I do it with a plus, and then once where I do it when I have a negative and I'm going to see what type of answers I get. Okay, so I typed that in. I made sure to use brackets around the numerator so that it puts this all up in the numerator. So make sure you have the brackets there, otherwise you will not get the same answer. Then I got divide, and then I even put my denominator in brackets. There's only one thing, so you wouldn't have to, but I, but I did it just in case. So we can click Enter. Okay, and I just got negative 0.26 and some other decimals. So this was time. Can time be negative? It cannot. So this answer, whenever we use the positive, we're going to have to omit that. But let's see what happens if we use the negative. So I'm going to go up and grab this. I'm going to move over and then switch the plus. It was a plus the first time. Now we're going to do it as... A minus okay and now I got positive 5.76 and I could have a positive time positive time is allowed so we want to omit the negative one and just take the positive one okay so I got one where we have the minus one where we have the plus but this one that we put in with a plus, it gave us something negative, so we're going to want to cancel that one out. That answer is extraneous. So the amount of time that it actually took is going to be this one right here. Okay, so that time that we just found, that was approximately 5.7 seconds we had found in our calculator. So for how long the snowboarder was in the air, he went up in the air, came down, and when he was at that height of zero, it took him 5.7 seconds to get there. Okay, so on to part B. It says, what is the domain that represents this context in set notation? Now, set notation, what I want to do is you want to think of the letter S to memorize what set notation is. If I drew kind of two S's, what I get is a curly bracket. So you can see this S, it literally kind of makes up part of the curly bracket. So our notation is going to be this kind of form. Okay. So the domain in this case was time. So we're going to have t given that. This symbol here means given that. And then time has to start from zero and be greater than it. And it's going to go up till the max amount of time that we had where it hit the ground, which was our answer from part A. So we have that. And then just make sure to always put that it still has to be an element of the real numbers. Okay, and then that's our answer for part B. So our homework questions, I'm just going to write down here at the bottom now. Okay, so that is page 419. We got numbers 4, A, and C, and then 6, just A and C, and then 7, 8, and 11.